Module 4, Gender Equality and Social Inclusion and Indigenous Factors. Introduction to this session. Welcome to Module 4 of this course entitled Gender Equality and Social Inclusion, where we will discuss how to integrate Jesse in adaptation work through applying the Gender Dimensions Framework. At the end of this session, you will be able to A. Identify the reasons for Jesse integration in adaptation work B. Explain the importance of gender equality and social inclusion C. Describe the ways to conduct Jesse analysis, including the Gender Dimensions Framework D. Discuss the differences between Jesse Blind and Jesse Sensitive or Responsive LLA and E. Provide examples of locally-led adaptation integrated with Jesse. We will look in more details at Gender Equality and Social Inclusion, or Jesse, and how Jesse can be integrated with adaptation work. In Module 1, we have defined the terminologies used in Jesse, so I hope that we all have a common understanding of what we are talking about. In addition, during this session, we will talk about the ways in which Jesse integration can be done, starting with a Jesse analysis, looking at the situation, and analyzing how to achieve gender equality and social inclusion. A number of frameworks can be used, which you can choose as a standalone framework or combine them together depending on your objectives. Gender, ethnicity, and disability status are critical considerations and constraints in participatory approaches and disaster responses. During this session, I will try to share some methods and approaches to provide you with tools to use in your own work. There will be examples of locally-led adaptation initiatives that are Jesse blind and those that are Jesse sensitive or responsive, including working with women, youth, disabled, and indigenous peoples. Please feel free to share your experiences in working with these groups and the challenges they faced. With the integration of Jesse in climate adaptation, SDG 5 on gender equality, and SDG 10 on reduced inequality indicators, could guide the activities that need to be done to fulfill these indicators. Gender equality and social inclusion in adaptation work. As mentioned in the first session, gender equality and social inclusion refers to all groups of people in the community, such as women, men, youth, disabled, elderly, indigenous, migrants, stateless, and other social groups. For this particular course, the social inclusion part focuses on indigenous peoples and the disabled, and how they're included in the adaptation agenda with a gender responsive approach. Working with communities and organizations at the local levels to address climate change impacts and build resilience requires gender equitable, socially inclusive, and well-being based approaches to provide a holistic approach to achieving the relevant sustainability goals. Without employing these approaches, the implementation of programs and projects on climate change adaptation, livelihood diversification, and poverty alleviation could further marginalize those involved in these activities who have no voice or social protection or are disadvantaged based on their gender and other intersectional factors. Jesse is the collective term that is widely applied to recognize the complementary actions that are needed to ensure equal access to socially, economically, and politically valued goods, resources, opportunities, benefits, and services for all. ICF further expounds that gender equality is the absence of any discrimination based on gender, with equal rights, responsibilities, and opportunities for everyone, without distinction depending on their gender. This means transforming the distribution of opportunities, choices, and resources available to women and non-binary people so that they have equal power to shape their lives and participate in the process, thereby increasing equality between people of all genders. Rights, responsibilities, and opportunities will not depend on the gender that society attributes to each person, ensuring that everyone has equal access to socially, economically, and politically valued goods, resources, opportunities, benefits, and services. In addition, social inclusion refers to the process of improving the terms for individuals and groups to take part in society. It also describes how improving the ability, opportunity, and dignity of people disadvantaged on the basis of their identity to take part in society. It makes the rules of the game fairer. In locally-led adaptation work, these factors need to be kept in mind. Oftentimes, those who already have the power at the local or community level continue to take the lead and the concept of Jesse is left behind. Therefore, project implementers need to ensure that in encouraging the local community to be active, care must be taken that all members of the local community are represented and not marginalized by those who have strong voices and have been veterans in the field. Always remember to implement the no harm done policy, which is to ensure that whatever actions are done in the field, no damage occurs or nobody is harmed. Intersectionality and Indigenous Factors. 
Gender, ethnicity, and disability status are critical considerations and constraints in participatory approaches and disaster responses. The definition of intersectionality was given in Module 1, and hope you remember it. It was presented there that intersectionality is a concept coined in the 1980s by Kimberly Crenshaw and describes the interconnected nature of social categories or identities such as race, class, and gender as they create overlapping and interdependent systems of experience, discrimination, or disadvantage. Thus, instead of just one identity category, privilege, or other points of marginalization, intersectional theory sheds light on the ways various vectors of identity, such as race and gender, impact one another to form unique subjectivities and experiences. Intersectionality also requires researches to respect people of other cultures, races, and religions, even if they are different from their own. In addition, taking into consideration indigenous factors in gender-responsive LLA is important, as the socio-political dynamics play a role in decision-making at various levels, even with the LLA approach. Factors include institutional, political stability, corruption index, accountability, government effectiveness, rule of law, education and health, access to education and health services, quality of education, sanitation, water supply, and labor force, youth unemployment, child labor, women's agency. The principles of locally-led adaptation have good entry points to incorporate intersectionality and indigenous factors, particularly in the context of devolved decision-making to the lowest level, addressing structural inequalities faced by various groups that are usually marginalized, such as women, indigenous people, youth, people with disabilities, or who are displaced, and marginalized ethnic groups. Power dynamics could lead to corruption by the mighty and result in inequalities, as those who are near or close to those in power will be able to get more benefit. By taking into account intersectionality and indigenous factors, it ensures that the varied characteristics and composition of people in the communities, the power dynamics, and other socio-political aspects will be taken into consideration before intervention. Jesse Analysis Some methods and approaches are shared to provide participants with tools to use in their own work. To understand the situation related to gender equality and social inclusion within the communities that could hinder the effective implementation of interventions and other actions. The planning and implementation of a Jesse sensitive or responsive adaptation program needs to be informed by the findings of a Jesse situational analysis, which identifies the roles, responsibilities, problems, needs, capacities, interests, and levels of participation of various groups of stakeholders. Through this process, the activities at the local level can ensure inclusion and will leave no one behind, with everyone given an opportunity to participate, learn, and benefit from any initiative within their communities. Such a process can help project implementers and stakeholders to set goals and objectives, plan and implement activities and projects that are fit for purpose, which can bring about sustainable growth and development in the community through locally-led adaptation measures that are inclusive. Jesse analysis is the process of considering the impact that a development project or program may have on people of different genders and social groups on the economic and social relationships between them. Jesse analysis can come up with gender and social issues, gaps, inequality, opportunities, and capabilities, or lack thereof, that can be addressed by the locally led project on climate change adaptation to improve livelihoods and resources accessibility. A number of approaches and frameworks are available and can be applied in conducting a Jesse situational analysis. The major steps to guide your analysis are as follow. Number one, understanding the context. Number two, identifying differences. Number three, examining inequalities. For the first step of understanding the context, it is important to understand and address the current context in the site where the project is being implemented. In conducting an analysis, we should understand the different elements in the social and cultural, economic, and political and legal context. Different project sites have different nuances in their contexts, which could be both enabling factors and challenges in the implementation of projects. The context that could be explored include the following. First, social and cultural, which looks at social groups and their demography distribution, where are social groups located, social infrastructure, for example, education and health, local and external organizations, social relationships and hierarchy, and unspoken rules and norms in general and within each social group. The second is economic, such as the natural resources, for example, land, sea, channel, wetland, forest. Economic activities of each social group, for example, how are they earning their living, entrepreneurship, investments, labor forces, for example, number of men and women in the workforce and migration, and economic opportunities. Third is political and legal, which looks at policies and laws and governance, 
resource management, for example, natural resource management, rights of individuals according to their genders and social identities, access and control over resources of different social groups, and conflict resolution mechanism. The second step is identifying differences, such as differences between people of different genders and other intersectionalities, for example, age, class, ethnicity, religion, and race. Identifying differences could manifest the roles, behaviors, and daily activities of different social groups that could also be shaped by the above context. For example, social norms and expectations, legal obligations, and economic constraints. The following are some of the examples of indicators that can be studied to identify and examine the differences between social groups. The third step is examining inequalities. Aside from looking at the differences between women and men and other social groups, inequalities should also be examined to address power relations between different genders and people of different social identities to identify if there are gender-based hierarchies, exclusions, participation and decision-making power, benefits gained, and risks faced by certain groups, among others. These inequalities could affect locally-led adaptation initiatives and could lead to their failure in implementation. Factors that create and maintain such forms of inequalities should be identified. Taking these steps in Jesse analysis, understanding the contexts, identifying the differences, and examining inequalities could help to identify the project objectives that are suitable for the site and henceforth plan and implement activities that can meet such objectives to improve the lives of those on the site and bring about gender equality and social inclusion. These steps are useful methods that can inform how relevant issues can be addressed. Additionally, such processes give new insights into the different roles of each gender and social group, and access to resources that may challenge existing beliefs and understanding of practitioners or project implementers on the site where they are working. For example, that women may have less capacity than men in certain areas, for example, in technology, and so project implementers are less likely to approach them in order to launch certain relevant activities. As a result, such insights can help practitioners seek suitable means to engage stakeholders of all genders and social groups to promote their meaningful participation and ensure that they can benefit from the project or program. Gender Dimensions Framework in Gender Analysis The Gender Dimensions Framework is presented, which provides a framework for integrating gender in any intervention or activity. The framework can also be applied when looking at various social groups in relation to understanding the dynamics, differences, and inequalities that exist but could not be brought to the surface unless studied in a certain way, such as with these dimensions framework. These are the domains included under the gender dimensions framework, namely access to assets, knowledge, beliefs and perceptions, practices and participation, time and space, legal rights and status, and power and decision making. These six domains can be used to formulate indicators to study any group or sector. Access to assets. Who controls the access to physical resources, capital, information, markets? Knowledge, beliefs, and perceptions. These are the cultural norms that define gender roles according to the physical demand of the task. These roles are reinforced in the community through the mentioned beliefs and perceptions. Practices and participation. Both women and men have roles to play within the community. Other intersectional factors could affect the way each one is treated or participates. Time and space. Women are usually facing time constraints due to their responsibilities in their households and childcare, giving them less time for their self-care or individual pursuits for advancement. Legal rights and statuses. This could affect legal ownership or freedom of expression. Power and decision-making. Oftentimes, power dynamics within the households could be different outside. Those who have the money may hold more power over another and could make decisions while others do not have the liberty to do so. Given these various dimensions to work with, you can design your locally-led adaptation project to ensure the differences or inequalities are addressed by your project. Examples and case studies of LLA. This final section will share examples of locally-led adaptation initiatives that integrate JESSE considerations, including working with women, youth, disabled, and indigenous peoples in the context of locally-led adaptation or climate risk issues. Within locally-led adaptation processes, it is possible to promote gender equity and social inclusion. A few examples are given here, adapted from a working paper by Ty et al., 2023. Jesse considerations in funding, national policies, and other frameworks. This includes strategies to ensure decision-making processes and structures include and value all gender and social groups represented in the communities. Project finance and program design are flexible and adaptable. For example, accommodating specific needs of women so they can effectively engage in and benefit from the adaptation projects. 
advocating for a greater exercise of agency, wherein spaces and platforms are created to promote women, youth, or any other group's leadership, including opportunities to assume key leadership positions in their communities and local government, and women's groups and associations to advance climate resilience. Gender equal access to and control over resources, including finance and land, Examples given by the paper include having structures and modules that can make adaptation resources more accessible to women, including local revolving fund systems, savings groups, climate insurance programs, and cooperatives.